Hey everybody, it's Pastor David from Walden Community Church. Sure seems like there's a lot in here about how much God loves us, right? And you're always hearing that from Christians too. Christians are so quick to tell you, God loves you, Jesus loves you. But then, when you stop and think about it, just even for a little bit, you start asking questions like, okay, well, if God loves me so much, Why does he send people to hell? I mean, he should love everybody, right? If God is our Heavenly Father, he should love all his children. Why does he threaten them with hell? I mean, supposedly I have free will, right? I have free will. I can make a choice, this or this. Why does it seem like God forces my hand, right? Because doesn't he say like that I either love him or I'm punished. I love him, or I die? I mean, that doesn't sound like free will. It certainly doesn't sound like love. I thought I had free will. I thought God loves me. Jesus talked about that. And he uses an example that kind of appeals to parents. You know, what it means to be a parent, because the Bible talks about God as being our heavenly Father. And so I want to read to you a passage from the book of Matthew. This is Jesus from uh, where he talks about asking, seeking, and knocking. He says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And those who seek, find. And to those who knock, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, would you give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, would you give him a snake? If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask of him? What is that about? Why did I, why did I read that? Well, it's an example, right? It's an example. Jesus says, okay, all right, I hear you. I hear your question. You're a parent. You tell me. Your child is hungry, and before them are two doors. Behind door number one, there is a wonderfully prepared cooked fish. And behind door number two, there is a very much alive, poisonous snake. Now, you, as the parent, know both outcomes. You can see the choices and you know the choice that has to be made, but you're a loving parent. You're a loving parent and your child has free will. So naturally, you stand back and you allow the child to make their own choice and you as the parent will be happy with either door they pick. No way, (laughs) right? No way. If that were you, you'd let your child pick. No. What would you do? You'd tell them. You'd flat out tell them. Right? You don't have any problem with that. You would yell out to them which door leads to life. But that's cheating. No, it's not. You love them. But what if your child says, no, I don't want to listen to you. I want to take door number two. Then what would you do? Let them? No. You'd jump in front of them. You'd block their path. You'd push them back. You'd do everything you could to keep them from choosing the door that leads to death. But what if they still try to push past you and they reach out and they grab the handle and they're jimmying the handle? What would you do then? I guess at that point, you would threaten them. You would say, listen, my child, If you choose this door, you will die. Right? Geez, mom and dad, doesn't sound like I have free will. Seems like you're forcing me to choose door number one. Doesn't sound very loving. (laughs) Well, (laughs) okay, but let's just consider the opposite, okay? Let's say you let them make their own choice 
They have free will. They can make their own choice. And they choose door number two. And they get bit by a snake. And they're poisoned. And they're about to die. And they ask you, did you know what would happen? Yeah. Why didn't you warn me? Why didn't you try to stop me? Don't you love me? Which parent is more loving? Our God is a loving God. He is. He's a loving God. But, but, He wants you to experience the greatest thing you could ever experience. Because He is so loving, He wants you to have the greatest thing ever. And that's himself. And he's going to do everything he can to make sure that you get that message. So, if that means he sends search party after search party out to find you, if that means he shoots up flares, if that means he throws everything at you, including the kitchen sink, even if it means threatening you, he will do it because he loves you. God loves you. The Sunday at Walden Church, we're talking about joy. It's our last time together talking about joy because we believe as a church that the world outside doesn't offer you the same joy that God does. In fact, the world outside looks pretty crummy. God wants you to have a life of joy because he wants to be your life. And he's enough. I hope you join us for service. We have a 9.30 service. It's traditional. We have a choir. We sing hymns. We do responsive readings. We say the Lord's Prayer. We have communion. We have a second service at 11. It's contemporary. Come casual. Come however you want. It's the same hour we have a children's program from youth all the way through high school. We would love to be the church where you live. I'll see you there. Bye.